Welcome to the course. We're going to start off with a definition from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, a U.S. government organization that puts forth standards for federal agencies to use. NIST defines cloud computing as a model for enabling a ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable resources like networks, servers, storage, applications, and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. Now, what does that exactly mean? It's a pretty lengthy definition. And really what that breaks down to is cloud computing can be defined by these uh, definitions right here. Broad network access, on-demand self-service, multi-tenancy, rapid elasticity and scalability, resource pooling, and measured or metered service. So these all combine to form cloud computing. And we'll talk about each of these in detail. Broad network access means that the cloud provider can provide their services without being bottlenecked or being restricted by bandwidth. So they can be accessed from geographically dispersed locations. Usually this means through the internet. That means you can sell cloud services to customers across the globe. Customers can access their data or their applications regardless of where the actual data is physically stored. On-demand service allows customers to purchase and scale their needs with little or no uh, communication with the provider. So they're able to uh, change their requirements without having to perform a lengthy contractual uh, conversation with the cloud service provider. They can just adjust their settings on their own. So they could increase the amount of storage they need, maybe decrease that storage, or if it's an application, uh, increase the amount of uh, usage they're using with that application. To, it's all up to the customer and it's uh, put up to the customer without having the customer interact with the service provider. Multi-tenancy is a concept where one piece of hardware is used to host many different uh, customers. So this is what makes cloud computing uh, financially viable. Customers are provided with a portion of a piece of hardware. So whether that's in data storage, a customer would be provided a portion of that data storage and the cloud service provider would uh, host multiple customers using that same piece of hardware. So they'd have one data storage device and then they would provision that out to many different customers. This makes, this justifies the cost for the cloud service provider. They host these expensive pieces of hardware these expensive servers, server racks, they pay for the security and the power for those security racks. And then they provision those out to multiple customers, each char charging each customer a portion of the price. Uh, with virtualization, cloud service providers can provision out multiple operating systems or multiple instances of a cloud application or a web application. And this makes the whole cost, the investment, that the cloud service provider put in to obtain these resources justified and then allows them to make money. And that's the whole structure of cloud computing. Rapid elasticity and scalability allows resources to be scaled and adjusted depending on the customer's needs. So if the customer requires more processing speed or a better server, if they have a, maybe a dedicated server, then the cloud service provider can rapidly uh, change their needs, change the offering provided to the cloud customer. Now, this can be an easy example is with data storage. Say a cloud customer has 100 gigabytes of online cloud storage. They're reaching that 100 gigabyte limit and they want to store more files. That limit can just be increased easily by allocating more storage space to the customer. And that, that can be done very, very quickly through virtualization through other supporting technologies. Resource pooling means that 
uh, cloud service providers can use their components in a cost-effective way. They can uh, allocate resources on an as-needed basis, they can pool resources to meet higher spikes in demand, and they can use their resources to meet the individual needs of their cloud customers in a rapidly changing environment. So the cloud service provider is investing and they maintain a data center that has multiple pieces of very expensive hardware and they need to use these concepts like resource pooling, uh, multi-tenancy, etc. to allocate these resources effectively and in a manner that will make the cloud service provider money and then make that service very cheap for the cloud customer. Measured or metered service means that the cloud customer only pays for what they're purchasing. So this is much like a power company's power meter. If you've seen a, one of those meters that sits outside of a building and measures the amount of uh, kilowatts per hour, or I'm not entirely sure on the, the uh, measurement, but measures the electricity going into the building, Okay, that meter is very similar to what a cloud service provider would offer. Oftentimes, with uh, cloud computing, it's more along lines of how much data they're using, how much storage space do they require, what's the processing power they need for the uh, server that they're purchasing, or how much, you know, how are they using their web application. Uh, those are the measurements used to charge the cloud customers, but the cloud customers are only charged for what they use. They, they're not charged for excess. Or if they're charged for excess, it's, it's at a much lower rate than if the cloud customer, or a much cheaper rate than if the cloud customer were to purchase their all of that hardware on their own. So basically the cloud service provider measures uh, or puts a meter on the services that they're providing to the cloud customer and the cloud customer is charged based on what they use. For many of you, I mean, this is going to be review. It should be confidentiality, integrity, and availability are three terms that we're gonna be hitting on multiple times throughout the course. Just as a review, confidentiality is the protection of the data from unauthorized access. This usually involves some form of encryption to ensure that the data is not released or is not exposed to people who are not authorized to view it. Data integrity is the actual uh, integrity and accuracy of the data to make sure that the files maintain their structure and the data maintains its structure and does not change over time uh, either through malicious attacks or just through data decay. This is uh, when it, we talk about data in motion, data integrity involves the uh, accuracy of the data transmission and ensures that data is protected from any unauthorized alterations. And the availability is how, uh, how uh, information is provided to the cloud customer and if that information is provided on an uninterrupted basis. So depending on the amount of interruptions, that will affect availability and cloud computing is all is very heavily focused on availability and the ability to provide continuous service to a cloud customer. So that many of the uh, protection mechanisms that we're going to talk about in the course are based on the concept of protecting that availability and providing a consistent uptime or the amount of time that a cloud, cloud service provider can provide continuous service to the customer.